Hi everyone, we are connecting to an API and getting data from an API. And let's start with what is an API. An API is an application programming interface and it is something it's basically somebody else's program on, on the on the web and we can connect to it and get structured data from their program. For example, this app gets weather data from selected cities around the world. So I can click on Johannesburg and I get the current weather in Johannesburg or I can look in London and get the weather in London or I can get the weather from Windhoek, Namibia. And obviously when I created this program, I didn't type in all the current weather conditions in international cities around the world. I'm connecting to an API. This is powered by an API called Open Weather. And in App Lab, it all connecting to an API all starts with this function in the data tools, start web request. And you can see that it requires a URL and a callback. And when we're learning about a new function in App Lab, we should go to the documentation and read about it. So I click on see examples and I can find out what the start web request function does and I can find examples of how it works. And at the bottom, I can even see a list of all the possible APIs that I can connect to using start web request. Let's look at a few of those. So the one that, that's powering the web app is Open Weather. And this is the home page of Open Weather. It is, you've seen this before, it's a weather app that gives you weather in various cities around the world. But the key to it is that it has an API, an application programming interface, which allows us as programmers to connect to their data and use their data in our apps. So I'm using this current weather data, and I learned how to do that by reading the API documentation. There are many other APIs that we could look at. There's the Movie DB, which is an API that allows you to find information about movies and TV shows and actors. Uh, there's the Star Wars API. This is an API that allows you to connect to structured data about the Star Wars universe. You can find information about characters and planets and vehicles. And this is just a project created by some guy, Paul Hallett, who decided that the internet needed structured data about Star Wars. So he created it and put it, made it available to us as an API. The govtrack.us API gives us information about our representatives and senators in Washington, DC, and it allows us to track the progress of bills. Datamuse is an interesting API about words. It allows us to pass in a word and it'll tell us words with a meaning similar to that word, or it'll tell us words related to that word that start with the letter B or any number of things like words that want rhyme with grape that are related to breakfast. So this is an interesting API with all kinds of structured data about words. We can connect to it and make queries and find information about these words. Um, just to give you a picture of the API universe, this is a site called Public APIs that just lists the public APIs that are available for programmers to connect to. And you can see there are dozens and dozens on this page and then more than 23 pages. So thousands of thousands of APIs on the internet that you can connect to. And it all happens with this start web request. Um, of course, you have to learn about the API uh, to use it. And I'll just give you a little, little quick glimpse into API documentation for open weather. See, we can look, we're reading about how to get current weather data, call current weather data for one location. We can do it by city name. I know from reading this that they prefer that we do it by city ID. We recommend to call API by city ID. And they actually even give us an example of an API call that would work. This happens to be for London. So I can just take their example, Command C, open up a new tab in Chrome, Command V, paste that URL that's the API endpoint into Chrome. And I hit that and it tells me, oh, I need an API key. This is very common. A lot of these APIs require the, this key, which is kind of like your API password. And I know from playing around on this site that uh, I have to sign in to be a member of Open Weather. It's just free. They just require an email. And once I'm logged into the site, I can generate an API key. And I've already done that, so I can just highlight it, Command C, 
and go back to our Chrome tab. And I just know from reading the documentation and experience that it requires that I hit and API ID and it auto completed it for me because I've done this before, but I had to put in and API ID equals, and then I had to type in my API key, or I didn't type in my API key. You'd never type in your API key. It's always command C, command V. Uh, it's just a long series of nonsense letters and numbers. It's your API password. But now that I have that API key entered into the URL and I go to the website, I get actual data back. I get the longitude, the latitude of the city. I get weather information. I get a description of the weather. I get temperature, pressure, humidity, visibility, all kinds of weather information. So I know this is working. This is an API endpoint for open weather and I've passed in the URL base, the ID for a city, this happens to be London, and then my API key, and I'm getting data back. So I know that API endpoint point works, and I can bring that back into App Lab, and I can use that as my URL to start a web request. We'll do that next.